Um, it's half term in many parts of the country at the moment. Um, Christmas isn't so long ago. Is there an urgency about this? Yes, I mean, the first thing to say is this problem is real. It should go without saying. It's serious, it's immediate, and it's going to get worse as uh, employment gets worse and that the government isn't doing enough. One in seven families already are reporting not being able to afford enough food. Projections of unemployment range from 1.4 million at the end of the year to 4.4 million versus £500,000 um, at the beginning of the year. And we know that before this crisis, 17 million working people only had £100 of savings to fall back on. So we're going to have a situation where a lot of people with high fixed costs uh, who didn't imagine for a moment they would find themselves unemployed at the beginning of the year are going to struggle to feed their family. And the government really must act. So what should they do? It is being mooted the idea of extending the pilot scheme of our holiday clubs, which provide food, which is something that you recommended, isn't it, in your in your review for the government? Yes, I, re I recommended uh, three things, uh, all of which were uh, Marcus Rashford decided to my pleasure to make those a centre of his campaign. And those are for children at school during the holidays to expand. The actual government uh, created uh, holiday food and activity clubs for those children who are not yet at school to expand the healthy start vouchers and at school to expand the eligibility of free school meals. And the, 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 um, the holiday uh, activity clubs are, are very interesting. In-kind support, so in the form of food, education, actually is shown to have a better impact than putting the same small amount of money into universal credit. OK, and but... These at, sorry, Karen. You know, I was just saying, but at the moment, they only operate as a pilot scheme, isn't it? They're just in um, 17 council areas. Could they be scaled up in time for the Christmas holidays? Well, I, I think they could, actually, but it depends how you do it. So, there were, as you say, there were 17 last summer... At the beginning of this, in DEFRA, when DEFRA was looking at how to address this problem of food poverty, they put in place, a council said, we would like to deal with ourselves, but at the moment we've got too much on, and that's where the vouchers came from. But I was speaking to some mayors of big councils last night, and they feel that with the, uh, the improvement in their services through the pandemic, they would rather be given the money to set up... Uh, things like holiday food and activity clubs. And I think critically, leaving the decision to the local authorities, they're the ones who know exactly where the problems lie. They're the ones who know in their local areas how best to solve to but solve the you've obviously been talking to them and, and we have on the programme ourselves as well. And the initial £63 million that they were given has by and large been spent. So how much would it cost to expand these clubs, do you think, approximately across England? Well, so it's, it, the, the, the original 63 million was only meant to last until the 2nd of October. So I find it odd that that is proposed as a solution to this problem. I estimated that for the summer holidays, it would cost uh, 200 million to run these programmes. Uh, I think that, you know, I'm, I'm putting together estimates for the winter and it depends on what you assume a take up. But it could cost somewhere for, for Christmas and the Easter holidays of 50 to 80 million for each of those things but you get not only the food but you also get uh, education opportunities a lot of these children have been left behind uh, in lockdown I've seen in Hackney you know my three children in Hackney are all uh, 12 and under they have screens they have a room I've been out and about in Hackney and uh, children many children haven't had those privileges and there's a huge educational gap and what's fantastic about the food and activity scheme is it not only addresses the nutrition but it also addresses the educational attainment. Would families have to pay because um, uh, a little while ago I talked to Nadim Sahawi, the minister who's actually coming on the programme um, shortly, and he said the research when we did the pilot demonstrates the family didn't just want the meals, they didn't like the labelling of them being free, they actually preferred to pay a modest amount, one or two pounds. Well, I think you leave that to the local authorities. They know best. You, you have to be careful that it isn't seen as a stigma, that, that all the parents uh, in the school would think it would be a good thing for their children. I think as with free school meals, you could definitely charge parents who aren't on free school meals to attend. These should be, you know, positive, helpful things for children. I personally, in Hackney, which is the borough that I know best, I wouldn't have a charge on. I think for the most vulnerable uh, families that might be off-putting but I think I would leave that to 
the local authorities and, and the schools who know these children and best. And who should qualify? Is it? Do you, do you agree with the current conditions for peop- for the children who get free school meals? Well, what we don't know, and I've been trying to find out, there have been reports in the papers that 900,000 extra applications have been made for free school meals. So that would take the total number from 1.4 million to to 2.3. And that is a large eligibility. I argue in my report uh, to extend it to universal credit because there's this unhelpful... um, a view sometimes suggested that there, there are large numbers of more affluent people on universal credit. But actually, if you look at the detail, uh, universal credit is a pretty good proxy for people who, if they have a crisis in their budget, might struggle to afford food. So your view, whatever the means of delivery, but extend the mechanism for free school meals to all families on universal credit. Yes, that's that's the view that I put forward. And that's one of the things that uh, that Marcus Rashford is campaigning for. There is um, one suggestion that actually it would be better to channel all the money through universal credit to keep the um, temporary rise of £20 and allow families themselves to decide what to do about food in the holidays? Well, I think that the £20 rise is welcome. As I say, universal credit is not a large amount of money for the vast majority of people on it. 59% of people on universal credit are living in poverty. Um, However, there is really strong evidence that in-kind support directly providing nutritious food is much more effective at improving children's diets than increases in the overall financial value by the same and small amount. So I wouldn't say, so I would say as well as in keeping the increase in universal credit, there is clear evidence that providing in-kind benefits works. And finally, um, you've talked about Marcus Rashford being interested in your proposals. Your review was written for the government. Given everything that's been going on at the moment, have they been in touch about implementing your recommendations? Um, I haven't been backward in coming forward uh, with ideas. So I have been feeding in um, to Treasury, to Education and to Number 10 uh, ideas of how they could rapidly uh, implement this by Christmas. But I have no idea that the... The, the dark centre of government is invisible to me and I have no idea exactly what they're working on as we speak. <laughs> One way of describing it, dark centre of government. Henry Dimbleby, thank you for talking to us. Brings us to 21.